Let's dance! Oh my goodness, we're dancing! Yes, we are, we're dancing because we love DIY so much. We love DIY so much. Yes, I know it. Welcome back to my channel, The Diaries of DIY Danny, where I solve home decor dilemmas with a DIY. Today's video is all about simple, simple, simple builds that you guys can create to make high impact in your homes. So I'm gonna show you guys how to create a simple front entryway console table that's going to be a part of my Simply Beautiful DIY creations. And before we get started, a gentle reminder to hit that subscribe button because I got a lot more DIYs coming your way because I won't stop, don't stop DIYing for you so don't miss out. Without further ado, let's get into this DIY. Editor, who roll the tape? So recently I got a call from Alexandra Gator, a home decor YouTuber, and our conversation went a little something like this. Hey Danny, you're so amazing and awesome and like so totally casual and cool. Nothing compares to just how amazing your DIYs are, so I need your help. This was the exact script of the phone call, I swear. <laughs> I was wondering if you could create a minimal inspired front entryway causal table for one of my small space makeover videos. Okay, so when do you need this by? Like in two days? Yeah. Sure, I can make miracles happen. So I casually tell her, no prob, bub, I got this. I needed to keep it simple because it's really important to me that I'm making something that you guys feel you can make too. Something so simple, so easy, that any beginner DIYer can take this by the reins and just nail it. Yes! Okay, so I just got back from Home Depot. I've just laid out all of my materials on the table here. I'll show you guys. I like to just kind of get everything organized. So I had my board pre-cut at the following sizes. One at 23 inches and two at 33 and a half. All right, so first step, we're building our table frame. The framework to all of our love of DIY. To do that, I used my pocket hole jig and set my jig to one and a half inch board thickness. Because if you remember our good friend nomenclature, when you get a two inch board, it is not a true two inch, it is actually one and a half inches. So once you know the proper thickness of your board, you can set the drill guide using the number guide on the side and set your stop collar on the bit. On my two 33 and a half inch boards, I drilled four pocket holes across the top inside edge. Now I really wanted to go for that beautiful waterfall effect meaning that you would cut the edges at 45 degree angles and they would meet up seamlessly. Seam seamlessly. <laughs> seamlessly. But I had to remind myself to keep this so simple that anybody could feel like they could make this. So I'm going with a simple 90 degree application which is easy peasy for anybody. <laughs> to help me do that, I used my fancy corner clamps to line up my 23 inch board with my 133 and a half inch board. Now, you don't have to use these clamps. I had them. When you're only one person, they make everything a heck of a lot easier. It's like basically having a third arm. It's kind of great. If you have it, why wouldn't you use your third arm? Right? It's like, hey. So I added some wood glue and secured my sides using two and a half inch pocket hole screws. And in less than 20 minutes, I had my entire entryway console table. Keep in mind, if you don't have a pocket hole kit, you can always screw and glue this together. I just suggest you pre-drill your holes first before you put the screws in so you don't split any wood. Cause we don't want that. He's pacing. So here's the worry with a tall table like this. The longer the legs end, you'll start to see that they kind of like bow inwards and that's not what we want and it doesn't make it very secure. 
to make sure that the legs stay straight and I don't have any bowing, I'm actually adding another piece of wood into the corners that are gonna act as a brace. Now you can also create um, 90 degree like triangle braces on the inside. You can also go by L brackets, anything that's going to help you reinforce that angle. So to help secure this from happening, I decided to add a quarter inch round molding piece into the corner that made it feel purposeful as a design choice, but it was also helping the structure. Now to keep it all in place, I secured it down with wood glue and one inch brad nails. I mean, at this point, the table was really beginning to take shape. A great U shape. And you can do it too. <laughs> Last to conceal any open edges and holes, I used a little bit of wood fill, basically like concealer for your wood. You just conceal all of those unruly lines and holes on your face, so you always look this good. <laughs> I woke up like this. <laughs> so to hide those pocket holes, I went with a pine wood plug, which normally will just fit right into those pocket holes. Sometimes they need a little finagling, so I just kind of tap them in with a hammer. And then once you take a sander to it, nine times out of 10, it'll make it nice and flush. Once I was happy, I sanded down my table, working through my grits, starting with an 80 grit and finishing with a 300. Listening to music is one of my favorite pastimes when I'm DIYing. So today I'm listening to copious amounts of different uh, movie soundtracks. Kind of like John Williams, anything from Interstellar, Pacific Rim. But I'm curious, what do you guys listen to? Because I absolutely love sharing music ideas and I wanna know what like kind of music do you guys listen to? It's just a passion of mine, so I thought we could share a passion. So let me know in the comment section below. To create my nice curved sides, I simply rolled my hand sander on the edges slowly and carefully until I got the nice edge that I wanted. Now all that's left is just to stain and add a top coat. So for this piece, I went with Vera Thane's color choice, Early American, which is like a nice brown, but has a little bit of a red undertone. It's just beautiful. I love it. I don't know what late American looks like, but early American, you're stunning. <laughs> And I have to say, I really got lucky with this board because it just had such great detail on it that made the piece feel so much more rustic and original. I don't know if it got those notches from the manufacturer, but all I can say is that it just added all these little extra pieces of personality and charm to that board that I love, love, love. So I did two coats of stain using a cotton rag and left it to dry. So pretty. Okay, it's been a really, 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 really long day. Um, because I'm on a time restraint, I am gonna try to get this done today, which means I'm gonna probably put the finish on in the garage tonight. Um, so if it's too dark in there, I might not film, but maybe it will, <laughs> we'll see. But I really like the way it turned out. It's nice, right? It's got some character, but at the same time, it was just like really simple to build. So nothing to it, just kind of easy peasy. And uh, not a bad little piece, right? Cute, super cute. All right. All I had left was to just put on a polyurethane top coat. to which I did two coats, giving a light sand in between these coats. You'll notice that this sand is super important because once I was able to sand it down, it just made it so silky smooth that that last top coat just went on so nice. It was just, ugh, such a good board. And just like that, I had an entire front entryway console table ready for Alexandra's makeover video. And I did it in record time. Who's officially the DIY queen? This gal. Actually, I know a lot of great DIYers out there. Kudos to you. But today, I'm giving myself the crown for two seconds, and then y'all can have it back. <laughs> Just pass the crown around. We're all queens and kings and dogs. You can be a squire. 
My goal was to keep this simple, minimal, and beautiful, and I'm pretty sure I did all of that. Once I got that side table into the space, my jaw was on the floor. I liked how minimal it felt, especially in a small space like that. It didn't take away anything, but just added so much character in that corner, and I loved that. Now, I saw a lot of comments coming on Alexandra's video asking why we didn't put extra storage in this console table. You know, because you live in a studio space, everything is about storage, storage, storage. And I totally understand that, and I'm with you on that 100%. But we were adding so much storage everywhere else in this space that we really wanted to keep that front entryway looking minimal and clean and tidy. It's something that Katie, the owner, wanted, and I just wanted to make sure we gave her everything she asked for. And I think we delivered. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm like so overwhelmed. Oh my God. In the entryway. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even see this. Isn't it cute? Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> it's like the little French minimalist apartment <laughs> of my dream. Yay. I was happy, Alexander was happy, and Katie, the homeowner, was happy. So all in all, this was a successful DIY that was so easy to make. Guys, I know you can do it. I would give this DIY project a rating of one and a half stars. You had to pick up some tools and have a little bit of knowledge, but overall, it was a very simple project to complete. Thank you so much for watching. And if you love this project, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And also I'm curious, did you guys feel like this simple build was attainable? Do you feel like you could do this at home? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm definitely trying to find better ways to make this so easy for you guys to do at home that you'll feel inspired to tackle them yourself. And of course, until next time, keep on keeping on in the DIY space. <laughs>